Yeah, I'm just hoping that he's here for the right reasons. Yes. Like, have you seen any rumors? There's a rumor going round. All oh, the rumors are true, yeah. Rumor though now? Um. What? Oh my god. No, no, bags? no, 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 no you're lying. You're lying. Yep, married at first sight Australia is back and this episode was explosive. We met the 10 lucky women and men who were willing. Keyword there is willing to sacrifice their single lives for our entertainment. If I feel loved and accepted for who I am, that's what I'm looking for from this. That expectation is probably too realistic for the producers, so forget it, Sandy. Now let's meet the brides and the grooms as they make their way to the hens and bucks night. How could I ask someone to be with me forever when my forever is a lot shorter than theirs? Meet Lindell, who shares a heartbreaking story about her journey with cystic fibroids and a miracle drug that gave her a second lease on life. When I was told, it was like the best day of my life. Marriage and kids were off the table for Lindell, but with the discovery of the miracle drug, which expanded her lifespan by 40 years, marriage and kids are now in Lindell's future plans. And thinking about having a soulmate, it honestly used to be unimaginable. Next to walk into the hens party was Brunta Brunt. I don't know how to pronounce her name, but what I do know is that falling in love for her is everything. Meanwhile, for Melissa, sex is everything. I like to see myself actually as a little freak in the sheets. We know that Melissa cannot wait for her wedding night. Stay ready for me to spice up their life. We also know that she will be enjoying her last night of freedom. My husband-to-be, enjoy your last night of freedom because um, you're about to be married to me. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know yet, but let's meet Cameron and his man band who works in remote indigenous communities. And since those are in the middle of nowhere, he struggles to meet the one or anyone for that matter. Hello, hey, mate. Hi, hi, hi. What's your name, mate? Cam, what's Adam, yours? Adam, nice, nice to meet you. Mate. We then met Adam and he too didn't get an intro package when we first met him, so he'll probably be introduced as an intruder later on. Hey, boys. Hello, hi, mate. Hi, How are you going? <laughs> no intro package for Ali either, so skip. Most people, when they first meet me, would describe me as pretty arrogant. Jesse, I wonder why. Anywho, Jesse says that he's confident because he's an individual. Newsflash, Jesse, so is everyone else. Idiot. We also learned that Jesse doesn't like girls obsessed with social media and fake long lashes. Someone who's obsessed with their social media, pumped up lips, long eyelashes. Meet Sandy, who was born in Australia to first generation Indian Punjabi parents, and the rents aren't on board with the MAFs endeavor. And Sandy has never had a partner and needs the MAFs experts to help her navigate a new relationship. Culture, okay. tradition, my parents. That's huge for me. But I shouldn't have to worry about what other people think. Duncan is hot. This man's handsome, yo. Yes, I'm drooling over Duncan, who lives a structured life and his mantra, work hard, live hard, allows him to have weekends by the beach. And did I mention he is a hopeless romantic? Duncan is so hot, even Jesse wants a piece of that. Duncan's really cool. How's his jaw? God. We then met Josh, Shannon, Leighton and Dan who all didn't have any intro packages and later Josh told the guys he was looking for love. But it is right, like it's, it, it's love. Yeah, well that's exactly right. We then met fun, adventurous, spontaneous Harris who came across as a idiot. And on behalf of all the women, you're not hot. Let me be kind, you're not as hot as what you think you are. Girls think I'm hot. So, if you find a better guy, I'll beat him by 10%. If Harris's intro package is the reason why we didn't get to see the other grooms' intro packages, if they looked anything like that, I'm okay with us skipping intro packages. And now we've met all the grooms at the Bucks party. Over at the Hens party, Melissa was going on and on and on about sex. Then we met. Hi! Tani, I'm 
no package, Tony, Claire, Janelle, Caitlin, then walked in a boss babe Melinda who has four businesses and claimed that other females are either inspired by her or intimidated by her. Then the males, Melissa and Melinda clashed and their whole interaction was hard to watch. Um... After we met the new groups of brides and grooms, we eventually saw the first wedding featuring Lindell, who was potted up with Cameron. They both have a very similar mindset of this is a new chapter, this is a new beginning. Lindell and Cameron's encounter was adorable. Both were pleased by who was standing across them and their wedding was wholesome. I adored them so much, but... You know it's maths and the producers, I mean experts, are just messing with us. You know that they don't just pay two nice people together. I have a 21 week old little boy. I knew this could happen. Why can't they just be two normal nice people without baggage, be coupled up together? We need that one couple to root for amidst all the drama. Now speaking of drama... Brunty's friend's gut instincts were spot on and Brunty's other friend Jessica already knew Harrison and at the wedding reception they started having an awkward convo before Harrison abruptly exited. Now he claimed that he had a phone call then Jessica pulled Brunty for a chat to reveal that Harrison had been dating someone right up until he got called for maths. I spoke to her, she told me that he's like saying to her how he's going to wants to be with her. Oh, Harrison, keeping your options open, huh? Anyways, Jessica came with the receipts when the producers asked her for proof, but to me, it seemed very staged. But if it isn't, then Jessica is a real one. You're lying. You're serious. I'm lying. Babe. What? Brunty then called Harrison aside, and instead of coming clean, Harrison had an excuse. That really made me believe that Jessica wasn't lying and that... It wasn't really staged and Jessica is a real one. I was seeing a number of girls before I came into this. I'm a single guy in Sydney. Idiot! Meanwhile, over at Lynn and Cam's wedding, Lindell told Cam about her cystic fibrosis journey which led Cameron to reveal that he understood Lindell's pain because of a friend of his that had passed away because of their cystic fibrosis. I'm stoked that she's got this second chance of life. Oh, and I'm happy that, that I'm going to be there for her. It's unreal. After Cameron reassured Lindell that he would be there for her, the twosome shed a kiss. They seem sweet and everything, but I just don't buy it from the producers, from everyone. Remember Olivia and Jackson? They seemed pretty solid, the nice pair. He wanted to root for them, and then Olivia was the biggest villain, so I love them, I adore them, but. I'm sorry, I just, I can't. Sorry, Cam. Sorry, Lynn. As today, it has been an absolute gift. <laughs> hey, you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe.